Hello everyone. Let's uh, get started straight away with this May's webinar on Open DTEC's ability to perform multi-machine processing and its setup. What I'd like to do just briefly is start with an outline of what we're going to cover. We'll have a brief introduction. We'll look at some of the basic requirements. Look at the basic setup, including the configuration file. So, straight into the introduction. We're going to use these definitions in the webinar as we go on. The server, this is referred to as the machine from which OpenDetect is run and from which the jobs are sent out for batch processing. The nodes are the machines that will be executing the batch jobs. And in principle, a server can almost always function as a node. The concept is as follows. The basic steps are the server launches the multi-machine processing application, which is AD size MM batch, from the OpenDetect main window. This application has its own interface and is then independent from OpenDetect, which can be closed. The job to be done is summarized in a master parameter file, which is then split into n similar files, representing the n jobs that need to be run in order to complete the processing. OD Seismic MM Batch then allocates one job per node at a time, the next job being sent as the previous is finished. You can also restart failed and unstarted jobs. OD Size MM Batch eventually merges the output of all end jobs into one final output. We're working with the following principles in MM processing. OD size MM batch will send to each selected node a remote execution command of the executable to be used for the computation, like OD process attrib, for example. When the server is also a Linux machine, this executable is the only one that runs locally on the nodes on Linux. When the server is a Windows machine, however, it is necessary to run an additional executable as a daemon on all nodes, OD remote service. It listens to the remote command sent by the server and knows the full path of the binaries that have to be executed on the nodes, like the path to OD process attrib, for example. Some more basic principles. The remote executable, like OD process attrib, will directly read the input data from the project data. It will also write its output data in a temporary folder which is by default in the seismic subdirectory of the target project data folder. No data is ever written on the node's local disks. The processing is entirely done in memory. Okay, um, a couple of basic requirements here. These must be met in order for open detect multi-machine processing to function correctly. The OpenDetect binaries must be executable on all nodes and on the server. This also means, for example, that if you are processing an attribute that requires steering, then the nodes must also have the DIP steering plugin installed. And the same unique project data must be directly readable and writable from all nodes and the server. And the nodes must have a configuration file. We often refer to this file by its short name, which is the batch hosts file. And if the network computers are behind a firewall, then several ports will need to be opened. Okay, now we look at some platform specific requirements, this time first of all for Windows. If the server is a Windows machine, then an additional executable as I've just mentioned, the OD remote service must be running on all nodes, and this includes the Linux nodes. Neither the configuration file nor the data route should change on any host unless you restart this executable. And the Windows nodes must be using the same physical folder for the data route as the server. There are also a couple of platform specific requirements that need to be met when the server is a Linux machine. The server must be able to execute a command on a node using a remote shell of type RSH or SSH. 
without a password prompt. We won't go into the complete details of this. The nodes must be Linux machines. Windows nodes cannot be used when the server is a Linux machine. And all nodes must be able to execute the binaries of the server machine. They cannot use local versions of OpenDetect. OK. The OpenDetect application does not need to be the same version on all nodes. So you can run 4.4 with 4.6. However, it is recommended to use at least the same major release. So a preferable combination would be, for example, 4.6D with 4.6G. And beware that the binaries used for the processing of each chunk correspond to the binaries available from each node. And what is not supported is multi-machine processing from the Linux server machine to the Windows nodes. OK, so we'll look at some initial steps from the basic setup. What you need to do is install or make available OpenDetect on the server and all of its nodes, local installation on Windows, and a network installation on Linux. You have to decide which nodes should be made available and fulfill the conditions listed earlier. Gather the host names for the nodes. You then create a folder on a network disk that will act as a data root and contain all surveys. You ensure that it is mounted on all nodes and the server. So looking at the configuration or batch host file, for a network installation of OpenDetect, the configuration file can again be called batch host and can be placed inside the OpenDetect application folder inside the subdirectory data or when nodes each have a local installation of OpenDetect, i.e. on Windows nodes, then place the batch host configuration file in the data root folder and set the environment variable detect batch hosts file path on all nodes to the path of the configuration or batch host file, including the file name and its extension. It's very important you have the full path here. Although you could have a local configuration file on each node, Placing the batch host file at the data root reduces maintenance and is less prone to error. OK, looking at the header now, the following four lane lines in the header should not change, although you may update the date. The first four lines are such, detect and the version, and the title, and the date, rounded off with an exclamation mark. You then need to f set the following two keywords for the Linux server. The remote shell can either be RSH or SSH. You can set the default NICE level, which is the priority, which is given to the processing on the nodes. And you may change the value of the first port from its default value of 37500. And this section should end with the second exclamation mark line. Now the body of the batch host file. For a Linux server, you can specify the nodes in such way. In other words, node 1 represents the host name. And the rest of the line after the colon is a freeform comment as it will appear in the interface. And for a Windows server, the nodes need a little extra specification, as you can see here. The two extra fields for the platform and the data root path, which is effectively pointing to the same folder in these two examples. When MMP is run from a Windows server, also note that the colon character needs to be replaced in the Windows data root path by a semicolon, since the colon is already being used to act as a field delimiter. So you can see here for the Windows server, the batch host configuration uh, node specification is slightly more complicated. But nevertheless, you can see here that P detect data and disk D52 detect data, they're actually pointing to the same folder. 
because we have uh, many problems with the batch host file and the setting up of uh, the multi-machine processing, um, we have taken steps that will be uh, implemented in version 5 of a new tool that will help in creating a correct batch host file. It's going to look something like this, where you can enter your display names, the host names and or IP addresses, the platform and the path to the data root folder for each of the machines you wish to use in your network as a node. And you can set SSH or RSH, the NICE level and the first port. And this tool is going to be accessible from both within OpenDetect and also as a separate application, which means on Windows with its own start menu icon. And the tool will also perform tests to ensure that the server and the nodes can communicate to the necessary extent to perform the MMP. In other words, can the nodes find the data root folder and read write into it? Okay, to have the uh, remote service executable start on Windows on startup, you can do this by making a batch script and placing it in the startup folder of the Windows start menu. The script reads as follows. And the similar process can be performed on Linux. Calling the script at boot in the following way. So, just before we go into the summary and questions, what I'd like to do is to give you a quick demonstration of the multi machine processing in action and a couple of the most common things that uh, can go wrong. So, bear with me just one moment, please. We'll come down and to our Open Detect 4.6 installation. What we're going to do, we don't need to display anything, we're just going to process an attribute here, it's a simple similarity attribute with no steering, just for our demonstration purposes. So we check we have the attribute available, and then we go to processing, create seismic app, Put attribute 3D, select that very same attribute, we can choose to do a volume sub-selection if we wish, in lines, cross lines and time range, but we won't. Now check all the other parameters as default and click from single machine to multiple machine and then click proceed. The processing will not begin yet. There was testing earlier, so yes we will overwrite it. And proceed. So we have a multi-machine processing window. We have a window table of available hosts and these we can add into the used hosts section, which will then be used for processing. Okay, this is information that comes directly from the batch hosts file. And we can see here, I can show you uh, a couple of things that can go wrong. So let's start with adding Bart's machine and we'll see what happens. You can see it's scheduled, but we get this error message. Connection to daemon on this machine is failed. This means simply that the remote um, processing executable is not started on Bart's machine. It's as simple as that. So what we can do then is just choose to stop that one. On Christopher's machine, I have it set up slightly differently. So we'll add this one and see what happens. You can see it's scheduled. 
we're not getting that error message but what we are getting is another error message within the processing window so let's just stop that and take a look this means that although the remote service executable is running um, the batch host file or the location of the mapping of the folder for this particular survey is incorrect because what we're getting here is a simple message telling me that on DGB 103 it's unable to find this seismic object with this particular ID. Okay, so let's see what it should look like. I know that my machine is set up properly for this. So this is another machine on the network. You can see it's initializing. And then what you can see down here is that it started processing. And it's set to do three lines at a time. This is the default setting that can be changed. So those three and then those three lines and then those three lines and that's it essentially um, this will carry on until it's finished you can choose to finish now and the processing will then try to merge the individual jobs which are these three line jobs into a single cube that you can do by pressing finish now or you can leave it to run to its completion and then the processing will round up by merging all of these single jobs into a seismic volume or if you decide that you wish to change your parameters you can choose to abort and you can choose to keep the information that you've already processed or remove it and in this case we're just going to remove and it closes down so let's just continue so we can see what we've covered is the basic concept the setup the configuration file or batch host file, starting the daemon and we've had a little demonstration. We've also looked at the next stage for the batch host file which will be available in OpenDTIC version 5. So any questions? No, I saw there's another question, no other questions coming so thank you everyone for attending the webinar. Um, it has been recorded and it will be in our uh, LinkedIn page and uh, in YouTube uh, within a week maximum. Uh, so thanks for attending and join us again next, uh, next time we have a webinar. We will send you a link for the webinar. And if you thought of any other question afterwards, please uh, feel free to email us at webinar at dgbs.com. Okay, bye everyone.